Good morning, friends. Welcome on this Sunday, July 26th, to, which is the eighth Sunday after Pentecost, to the Crescenta Valley online worship service. We're so glad that you can be with us today, and we have a few announcements this week. Uh, thank you to everyone who came yesterday to give to the Bailey Center and Learning Works. Um, our next time will be Saturday, August 8th, uh, from 9 to 1. And be sure that we are go you can bring school supplies for the Learning Works because they will need those. Just basic supplies you brought before. Notebooks, paper, pencils, um, you know, basic highlighters, pens, uh, things that your kids would use for back to school. Um, the prayer team is meeting still on Tuesdays at 6.30, so be sure that you get your joys and concerns into them as they are really doing a beautiful job praying for us. On uh, Saturday, August 1st, we'll be having a church council meeting. Um, really our first one since we've had all this has happened. So I know we've talked to some of you and if you have an idea or a thought about reopening or how things are going, we'd love to hear from you. So if you can get to one of uh, the leaders, Pastor Paul, myself, Jean, um, Debbie, Dan, uh, Linda Neat, if you could get to any of us and give us your feedback, we'd be glad to bring it to the meeting with us. Uh, thank you for bringing your offering and pledges and sending them in. We really appreciate that. This week, Pastor Paul is going to be talking about Jesus taking a rest with the disciples. So this week I want you to take a rest, take care of yourself because you deserve it. And we all need to step back a little bit and take a rest. So that's what we're gonna do this week. We're gonna take care of each other. We're gonna take care of ourselves. And I'm leaving you with love and peace. See you soon.
that's on fire Flow, river flow Flood the nations With grace and mercy Send forth your word Lord, and let there be light Let there be light Good morning on this July 26th, Sunday morning. We're glad you're here to worship, whether it's um, Sunday or later on. We're glad you're here. Uh, we've learned of some losses this week. Lucille and Ray Catton. Some of you remember Lucille from choir, from the days of the, the golden robes. Uh, she passed away in May. Her husband passed a few months before. Um, she lost her memory in her last years, but singing was one of the things she remembered the longest. So we offer prayers to anyone who knew her and especially her family as they have said goodbye to Lucille and Ray. And my nephew Peter did pass this week, Tuesday morning. I want to thank each and every one of you for this outpouring of, of prayers that have helped my family help Peter. Um, he is at rest now, blessedly, because he, the illness was very, very difficult for him. So now if you could just think of him lifted up, resting with God and with some loving grandparents and, and a dear cousin, Gregory. So thank you. Diane has a friend, Martha, who is moving towards transition to be with God. So she asked that we um, help her along with our thoughts to to move with ease to the next place. We are grateful for the healing we know of so far, and we pray that that continue uh, as time passes. We give thanks for Betty's healing, Barb and Wayne. Um, Janice has asked for prayers for a coworker named Bob from New York who had some emergency surgery and some health scares this week. Um, it, it makes my heart uh, grow, be full to know that, that our prayers are helping, that um, these acquaintances from different places, different aspects of our lives are asking for help and they see us as as prayers and encouraging their healing. So continue to pass on prayer requests to our prayer team and to um, to continue spreading these prayers, wrapping the planet with our prayers. This is something we can do right now uh, and it, it is a blessing to participate. Pray for those who are in the depths of depression and darkness and don't see a way out. Um, these days in this world, you look around, there's a lot for, um, for us to see darkness. There's disunity, disruption, and dis-ease. So even those of us who have strong strong hearts and outlooks can be discouraged. So we pray for everyone right now. Uh, anyone you might see or talk to or interact with is feeling some kind of loss and fear. So everyone you meet, treat with tenderness and including yourself. We pray again for wisdom and guidance in 
reopening, getting back out and interacting in social worship, economy. So we, we pray for guidance with our preschool, uh, for parents who need a place for their young children, for teachers who want to be with those children, Linda Taylor Bell, who um, is, is ready uh, in many ways to open the school. So pray for guidance and how we handle that, when is the right time and the best way to do it. We have some joys this week. First was that, that tea where we got to see and hear each other on our little screens. So um, it's a blessing. May we find more ways to interact that are safe. And big news from the Burks, Janice and Al's daughter, Heather, has become engaged to Oscar. So we wish them blessings uh, as they plan a life together. I want to thank, thank Janice for um, also the, the extra work she's been doing with um, challenges to the church during this uh, COVID-19 era plus her own work um, and still holding it together with those emails. You get an email from Janice, you know, open that and answer it as soon as you can and, and send her love and blessings. God, we um, ask you to help us make space for more joy. Open our hearts to receive these joys open our eyes to see them and our voices to celebrate them so we ask all these things in jesus name and we um, bless that squirrel that just ran across over my head and with the squirrel we're going to move into some meditation uh, blessed by some music from our worship team amen Let us be in an attitude of prayer 
and silent meditation. O oh, good and gracious God, for the gift of rest and renewal, for the ebb and flow of each season, we pause to give you our gratitude. On this Sabbath morning, help us to take time to rest in the cooling shade of your presence. Rescue us from the hectic pace of our daily chores, which tug upon our hearts, and help us to slow down, and help us to remember what is important in our lives and what is important to you. We thank you, Lord, for the many talents you have given us and help us to recognize how interdependent we are in our relationship to you. Healing God, today we lift up each person who may be facing a difficult time in their lives. For those experiencing a challenging medical issue, for friends and loved ones facing a difficult decision, or for others experiencing a relational strain. Surround these individuals with your healing love and compassion. Hear our prayers, O oh God, for to you we come seeking rest from the burdens of the world that can sometimes weigh us down. And gracious God, in you and in the Christ, we seek rest. We pray for those who struggle to find any rest, who must work endlessly to meet their needs and the needs of their families. And finally, God, we pray to have balance in our lives, to be involved in purposeful work and re-energizing rest. Help us to remember the words of our Lord. Come to me, all who labor and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. We offer this prayer to you in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our gospel lesson for the morning comes to us from the sixth chapter of Mark, verses 30 through 32. And the disciples returned to Jesus and told them all they had done and taught. And Jesus said to them, Come away with me to a deserted place. For many were coming to see them, and they had no time or leisure even to eat. So they went with Jesus in a boat to a deserted place. The Word of God for the people of God. Let me more of their beauty 
wonderful words of life, words of faith and beauty. Teach me faith and beauty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful. Christ the blessed one gives to all wonderful words of life. Sinners list to the loving call wonderful words of life. All so freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful Wonderful words, wonderful words of life, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echo the gospel call, wonderful words of life. Wonderful words of life Jesus only Savior Sanctify forever Beautiful words Wonderful words Wonderful words of life Beautiful words Wonderful words Wonderful words Since the beginning of Jesus' ministry, people have been attracted to our Lord, not only because of our Lord's intense love of God, but because of his deep, undying love for all people. Jesus loved ordinary people. He understood people then and understands you and me as we could never fully understand each other. And as we go about our daily task, Jesus' love is all around us, a love that is both human and divine. His humanity was subject to life's sorrows and joys, just as ours are. He labored as we labor. He grew tired and also sought rest, too. No wonder it is recorded of Jesus that the common people loved him and listened to him. He won them by his love. He was so considerate. He understood their needs. The 12 disciples who shared an intimate relationship with their teacher had a wonderful experience of his concern, his understanding sympathy and his patience with the frailty of their humanity. On the occasion of our text, we notice that when the disciples had fulfilled their Lord's commission and had given of their utmost, Jesus not only recognized their need for rest, but offered it to them. When you think about it, all faithful work saps our energy. We become tired and when we are tired, we can no longer give our best. At times like these, what is needed is a rest, a vacation, if you will. Now, even in the midst of this pandemic, people are, fortunately, for those who um, can and, and have the time, that they're taking a little break, a little vacation, from, from the everyday activities of their lives. And if we were not in this time of pandemic, this would be a time of the year 
on vacations would be for the most part in full swing. Now people taking a break from their normal routines of everyday life is, is healthy. But also, have you ever had experiences that when you take a break, it is not used to the fullest possible advantage? It is so easy to, to waste a vacation. By that, I mean to spend it in such a way that when we resume our normal occupations, we are in no way refreshed. And when we do that, it is a threefold sin. A sin against ourselves, our friends, and God. It is difficult to serve God effectively through our work if we have neglected to refresh ourselves in mind, body, and spirit when the opportunity comes our way. So I share with you this morning some thoughts about this text in Jesus offering his disciples a vacation or a break, if you will. First of all, what helps recharge us is a blessed change. The first thing our text tells us is to come by yourselves apart. We are invited to withdraw ourselves completely and entirely from that which makes up for us our daily normal routines. A change of environment a change of scene, to get away from that which is familiar, so familiar that it can make us irritable or bad-tempered. And it was Jesus' intention, too, that the disciples should depart, not only from the place where they had fulfilled their appointed tasks, but that they should escape from the people who required so much from them. How well Jesus knew that it is the constant demands placed upon us by our friends that can take a toll on our strength and good humor. The danger of failing in our Christian witness is always possible when we are tired and less able to withstand the normal tasks in our daily life. Remember the words of Jesus, come away with me by yourselves, apart. Get out of the rut of everyday things. Second, Jesus suggested the place to which his disciples should withdraw. Come away with me by yourselves to a deserted place. This means away from what we call civilization, cities, towns, busy streets, noise, and the rush of people moving about, away from humanity's created world and into God's, into the great, wide, mysterious world of nature. You know, Jesus often withdrew from the heat and burden of a busy life to a quiet hillside where he was able to rest in a quiet place in God's presence. And now we find Jesus inviting his disciples to a similar retreat. And he invites us to do the same. When we take a break or a vacation, may we wander and get lost in the beauty of nature. And may we look upon something that is great and big that we may find we'll be able to see ourselves in maybe some of our challenging or difficult situations in their true perspective. What a way to renew ourselves. You know, a good many of us spend our lives amongst noise. Therefore, to spend our vacation just running from one set of noises to another would not only be unwise, but could be harmful. And since our world is becoming increasingly noisy, so much so that we begin to imagine we cannot live without a noise of some sort, what we need as much as anything 
on a vacation is a good dose of silence. For there is healing in silence. There is peace. And living in a world of noise with many voices clamoring to be heard. In the times of silence, there is a voice that might be heard if we listen carefully. And that is the voice of Christ speaking to us through the calming silence. And finally, have you noticed one more detail of utmost importance in this story? It is found in the 31st verse of Mark 6. Jesus says a little word. Go to a quiet place, not by yourselves, but come away with me. Jesus went with them. There could be no true rest for those disciples away from Jesus. Jesus was their shepherd. Jesus could give them real rest and peace. Jesus would calm their fears, restore their faith, renew their strength, and Jesus' presence would impart his love for them. The next time we have an opportunity to venture on a vacation, may it not be a vacation from worship or from daily devotion and Bible reading or from our prayers. Let it be a vacation from the normal activities of our particular church, but in the quiet, undisturbed countryside or overlooking a beautiful ocean or maybe in a worship atmosphere of a church where we are not known. The hope is that we will be able to worship so we may become revitalized and our faith strengthened. If our faith, maybe our religion, has sunk to the level of the mundane, let us give our Lord the opportunity to find us again. And may we leave the door of our hearts open and allow Jesus to come in. And if we listen carefully, and if we listen closely, we will hear Jesus' voice that whispers, Come unto me, all who are tired and have weary spirits, and I will give you rest. And with our Lord Jesus, there is perfect rest. Amen. We are going to be singing, well, one of my favorite songs, Peace Like a River. So I want to be sure that all the young people, all the kids, and all the youth, everyone is over there, because I'm going to show you again, actually this is the Burke version, so I think this is the right version, of the hand signal signs to go with Peace Like a River. So I'm just going to mouth the words and I'm going to do the hand signals, so you can join along during this song, okay? So here we go. Like a river, I've got 
all. I love you. And now as we go forth into this new day, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. I've got love like an ocean. Peace to you all. I love you.